top triathletes congregate in Boulder for a variety of reasons beyond just the benefits of altitude. There are tons of empty roads to ride that are both flat and mountainous, amazing trails to run, great pools to train at, and, more importantly, other great triathletes to train with. I think about Boulder is sometimes it's hard because there's established rides and people turn up, so I think mean, you've just got to be disciplined enough to know what your session is and what, what the goals for your session are and stick to them. And, you know, today the goal was to, to ride about 180, 112 miles, 180 k. You got some, you know, some good work at threshold at, at, at race pace and, um, you know, it's great to have training partners, but like you say, I think you need to be disciplined enough and, and confident enough to know what the goals of your session are and to hit those goals. Whether it's a race or training, I, I just love to challenge myself. I love, I thrive on that. I mean, last night I was excited like it was a race almost. I get to test myself again and for me that's what it's all about, it's a, it's a personal challenge to, to be the best I can be, it's a very simple thing but it's a commitment I made to myself a long time ago and I, I love it, I, I don't get tired of it, I must say for me the motivation, the fire still burns as strong as ever. Like I said to you today, I, I love the sport now more than I've ever loved it. I don't know what it is, it's just I love being outdoors and I love, really, I just love to give it to myself in training. You know, I love that aspect of no one around, it's just me out there and I can really you know, get stuck in. Um, what I love about this sport, it's a, it's a physical challenge but it's a mental challenge and I'm more motivated than ever. Halfway through the ride, the group stopped to take a break and refuel before starting the long downhill back to town. That's where we had a chance to get some thoughts on the ride from Craig Alexander. Crowley, how far are we into this ride? We're 60 miles in, and we've got probably another 45 to go. So, uh, yeah, the purpose of the ride is obviously we've just climbed 25, 26 miles and just try and keep the power steady. Right. Um, now we drop back down to 5,500 feet. We're at nearly 8,000 up here. Okay. And the last hour of the ride, just try and hold Ironman pace. So you know, push a little a bit of extra power, high so, watts, and um, and then the run off the bike. So did you keep it in a big sprocket coming up a lot of that climb? Yeah, I've been in the big ring. I, the last, the few switchbacks at the end there where it hits about 12 or 13%, I, I dropped back to the small ring. Right. But yeah, I was in the big ring just trying to keep the power pretty steady. And what was the power at? It was sitting around 250, 250 watts, so uh, pretty steady, which is good, you know, when you consider you're getting up to seven, 8,000 feet. Right. Obviously, it's harder to maintain power at that altitude, but... Uh, you know, you don't want to go at race pace, but this time of the year, eight weeks out, I think it, you know, I try and push the, push the rides a little more. So in terms of simulating the Kona course, because obviously the big part of that course is from Kauai High to Javi and back to Kauai High. That's, that's where the, you know, the real damage can be done. Yeah. And so is, is that something you're working on? Um, yes, you know, I think obviously you, you train horses for courses, so you train for that course. Right. And, um, a lot of the time trial work I do and, and some of the longer rides are down sort of at Boulder, which is similar to the terrain you get in Kona. Right. The great thing about having the mountains is, you know, you can climb for an hour and a half or two hours and, and push steady watts, sustain power output a, right. a little bit higher than you would on the flats. And it develops a little bit of power, which is good for the climb up to Harvey. You know, sustaining power, normally yeah. that, I mean, that climb from quite high up to Harvey is about 18 miles. Yeah. So, you know. So this is similar. It, it is similar. Yeah. And, Parts of that climb, the gradient was the same as well. Probably a little steeper than what you get in Kona, but yeah, close simulation. So we're doing downhill for a while. Yeah, it's about 17 miles, I think, back down to, to Lions, and then um, and then a bit of flat time trialing. So. And were you you and Rennie at that point when you get down? I think most of the guys, when we get back down to Lions, will head back to Boulder, and Rennie okay. and I will go out. And it was sort of part of the course that we rode on the way out. Okay. We won't go all the way up, obviously, yeah. to the bottom of the climb, but we just got a little loop. We go around and get up about 25 miles of Ironman pace work and then transition into a nice little run in the heat of the day. <laughs> you guys are a massacre. So yeah, I don't well, know how bad And you got to prepare. This is a tough way to make a living. It is, but, you know, I mean, look at look at our oh, office. Yeah. It, it could be worse. Exactly. You know? Yeah, exactly. so it is tough. That's part of the challenge. It was easy. Everyone would be doing it. So. Exactly. All right, man. Have fun out there. Thank you.
Craig led the way down the grade. The rest of the cyclists would continue on back to town, but Craig and Marinda had other plans. They would be finishing up their 112-mile ride with a 25-mile high-intensity section nicknamed The Box. Craig gave Miranda a six-minute head start before heading off on the two-loop course that they would ride at Ironman pace to simulate the last 25 miles of the Queen K Highway. Craig's goal was to go as hard as he could and hopefully ride Miranda down. I was very tactical last year, you know. I mean, Mac had been vocal all year about trying to get the guys to work with him, and they did. And, um, you know, they were very smart in the way they did it. I think as defending champion, I was expected to close all the gaps. And, you know, I was able to do that for 60 miles, and I think the gap opened just before Harvey, and those guys were able to work together and really consolidate it, and that's the way it was. Our group didn't want to work. You know, and I didn't expect anyone to work for me. I would have liked someone to work with me. You know, I sat on the front of that group for 30 or 40 miles. It was a learning experience, and, you know, I, I think I've been fortunate. I've had a great run in Kona. I've got a good record there, and it's something I'm proud of. You know, I think it's, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to, to be consistent every time. You know, you're not going to win every time out. There's just too many good people out there.